This episode of Fresh and Buds is brought to you by K.O. Mayo. Listen, folks, I love sandwiches, you love sandwiches, and no sandwich in the realm of Wraith is complete without some K.O. Mayo. It is straight savage, folks. It is so good. And guess what? It used to be not that good. Honestly, not the best. But hey, listen, as of this week, it has gotten a lot better. We tweet the recipe just enough to well just make it super good and very very exciting now thank you to ko mayo for supporting the show we really appreciate it and uh, you know it helps us you know make an awesome show just like this one fresh and Welcome back to the last episode of Fresh and Buds for this year. That's right, folks. We're here. It is the end of 2023, and we're going to wish it goodbye. And who am I joined by? It is Mr. Viz, a.k.a. Gary. How you doing, buddy? Hey, man. How you doing? I hope you had a good holiday. Uh, I'm back home. A little bit of Sunday scaries on the Tuesday, you know, Tuesday scaries if you're if you're vibing with that, but who, you know, you gotta, you, that's, that's how the holidays are. You know, you go, you go see your family and then you, you come back and you're like, Oh crap, I'm in the middle of the week. And I go back, gotta go back to work. Yeah. You know what? The nice thing about Christmas falling on Monday this year means that Christmas Eve will be on Monday next year, unless it's a leap year. I don't know. It is, it is a leap year. Then it'll be a Tuesday. So then like, that's like right smack dab in the middle of the week. So like, nothing's getting done that week or the week Nothing. after let's be real so that's yeah. that's prime holiday season when it when it falls on those days but uh you know we're, we're kind of in the in the throes of of it being not good right now i understand the long game there, thinking about the leap year yeah, you know, yeah. Really gotta think ahead yeah yeah we're big leap year uh, folks over here but we do have a great episode for you all this week uh, we're going to kind of take a look back at 2023, wh- what it was for Flesh and Blood and and the different sets and the things we liked about it, things maybe we didn't like. And uh, uh, we'll look towards 2024 a little bit, you know, especially like heavy hitters coming down the, the pipeline really, really soon. But before that, I do want to shout out to the Bud Discord, best place to hang out in the whole community, maybe the whole world. And also, please check out the Twitter at Freshbuds Pod. YouTube, all of that's in the link tree. Any of that helps. It's the best way to support the show. Patreon will be reevaluated in the new year, but I'm not worrying about it now. I'm worrying about it then because guess what? We have a podcast to do, Gary. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. First oh, of all, yeah. what's new with you in, in your flesh and blood world? Uh, Hey man, it's been it's been kind of kind of busy. Um, we did I had my did my armory on Saturday. Played a bunch of CC. Loving Vincent. Vincent is just so fun. Um, people locally trying out the new prism, and they're realizing that uh, Vincent's probably the move into prism. Mm-hmm. Still, um, go again on angels is still really good, but uh, you know, so is unpreventable arcane. Um, it's been good, man. I'm excited going to Hartford. Um going to be judging Hartford, so that's going to be fun. I got to do some prep for that. Got to buy my train ticket still. Get to see you and Greg there. Really excited. Oh yeah. Um but, you know, it's it's been kind of it's been kind of busy, you know. I've been doing a little bit of buying and selling Flesh and Blood, not playing too much. Um I was just getting off I had COVID last week actually, so didn't get to play much at all. Um but it yeah. So, I'm just kind of, you know, vibing with Vincent, loving um trying out this this mono red mono red red line version of vincent with some pumpkins in blitz pretty oh. fun yeah the pumpkin list so it's you know and now that kano's gone we don't have to worry about arcane barrier just emperor who's also tearing up a storm but that's true that's true i'm sure yeah. next skirmish season will be the end of emperor if, if already yeah the seven dollar legendary <laughs> yeah i know yes yeah, this is crazy but you know I, what was that how's your how's your journey in flesh and blood oh it is it's good you know uh after 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 columbus you know i I definitely took a step back 
relaxed a little bit, tried to hit some armories, did a, a win a box thing last weekend, which was fun. Not a lot of people showed up, but you know, Hey, I appreciate the LGS for trying. Um, and it was a good time and, you know, been enjoying just like podcasting, right. You know, I've been creating content and I'm really excited to spoil a card for heavy hitters next month. Um, which is going to be a lot of fun. So kind of getting my ducks in a row for that and, uh, making sure that, you know, it's, it's a, it's a good one. It's a good one. I, you know, always want to put my best foot forward for LSS, uh, when, when they ask uh, me to do something. So, uh, we will see how that goes. We will see if that is true. Maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe not. Who knows? But it's, it's been, you know, it's the end of the year, right? This is, this is time to relax. Hopefully as long as the holidays aren't too crazy, but next year it's, you know, just grinding, dude. We're just mm. going to be, Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be doing so much. I don't know what, but it's going to be a lot of it. Bruce, I tell you that. Nation is going to be popping <laughs> off in 2024. Listen, brutes are going to be eating really good next year. I almost can guarantee it. And it's already dug up. Yeah. I mean. yeah. Uh, but no, I'm glad to hear that you, you know you've been in, you know enjoying when you can. I'm glad you're enjoying Vincent. Obviously, I know you've been judging a lot or trying to judge more, and uh, you've been doing it. You know, getting getting the hours in and, and judging at Hartford's going to be huge. And you know, I always say I'm glad somebody's doing it, and I'm glad <laughs> it's not me. So you know, uh, hats off to you. But hey, listen, Flesh and Blood 2023 was a year of of a lot of things. I think it was the first year that we got a three sets that like Brian Gottlieb really had his hands in all three of them. And also we saw a lot of new things happen in each set, right? They're, a lot they're, of new heroes. Yeah. New heroes, but like something unique with each set that we had never seen. So outsiders, let's talk about outsiders, right? We're going to do our fresh faves, each of us for each of these sets, just to kind of recap and talk about what we liked. But Outsiders was the first hybrid card set that we, we got. And if you don't count the Emperor, although that's not really hybrid, that's like dual classed. So, Outsiders. Gary, mm -hmm. Fresh Faves, who was your favorite hero from Outsiders? I mean, I know this, this one's going to be shared between the two of us, but I mean, Dr. Riptide, I mean, what a... What a house of a what a what of a hunk of a runt is he? I mean, like <laughs> he is a runty guy. We love we love Riptide in this house. Um, you know, he really put a different spin on what Ranger could be. Um, you know, people had the Azalea and the Lexi and the Ranger mentality, but you know, this kind of trap mentality for Riptide and this extra, you know way to just kind of deal damage that's not through actually attacking is kind of crazy um mm -hmm. really cool really cool hero um you I mean obviously you know you did really well with it he won 22 225 whole dollars <laughs> yeah well, well, you know, <laughs> not he's to brag no. <laughs> he's in the money though that's the thing um yeah so i'm really i'm really i love riptide yeah riptide was was really neat uh design wise uh aesthetically for sure you know we we saw that art and we were like what's going on here why isn't this a brute and then and then we kind of as soon as the the collective community accepted riptide we were like okay this this all makes a lot of sense he's a gross yeah. gross trappy ranger you know hey listen sometimes that's okay and and i think that the design there was really really neat and they made traps cool Right, like the traps were cool from Crucible, but not not necessarily playable. And they are somewhat playable in in Riptide currently. Maybe not uh, at at like a full play set of each, but you know the new the new traps are really sweet, and they've been giving them really sweet cards in the expansion slots. But what was your favorite weapon from that set, though? Because I guess we only well, you have some some cool options with the assassin weapons. Um, and I guess you could throw quivers in there as well because it's not, it's equipment, but it's not, it's like, you know, you're holding yeah. it. Yeah. Um, my equipment and my equipment and weapon go kind of hand in hand here. Um, but I'm going to have to say nerve scalpel. Oh, yeah. I think, I think nerve scalpel is such a fantastic card and it, it like, 
we had spider's bite obviously in in dynasty and that was great um i still don't understand how they made that a rare <laughs> and then they made it a common but a uh, token but whatever um the uh the fact that you can like the, the the fact that you can use my favorite equipment to do spe- some fun special things is just re- really fantastic. It really shows the development shops that LSS has, and I like that it, they've basically given the assassin these different tools to deal with different opponents, which it feels very much top down. Like this assassin is going into the battle with the right dagger for the job, mm-hmm. um, and so you know. Uh, honorable mention to scale peeler which we don't see much of anymore but back when olden was around like that scale peeler goes a long way scale peeler was the equipment one right yep yeah and uh nerf scapel is the defense reaction one yeah i i mean i as a riptide yeah. player i see yeah defense yeah. or any reaction yeah oh, okay as as a riptide player i do see that one the most mm-hmm. right um but um, you can just jump to the equipment. You mentioned it. I know exactly what you're going to say. Yeah, flick knives. Yeah. I mean, what a fantastic piece of equipment. I mean, like, because the mentality, you know, you go into these sets where the, you, oh, we're getting a new hero. We already have a legendary for this slot, this arm slot of um, Ter- uh, Shuko, right? Shuko's this ninja arm mm. piece that the ninjas are playing. Um, and then you have flick knives. And you're like, well, this is this this is not better than Shuko. But then you think about it and you're like, Holy crap! This is a this is too unpreventable damage over the course of the game, and it also blocks if you need it to. Um, I mean, and once you pair it with the different effects on the different types of daggers, I mean, flick knives is just it, that card is. I mean, it is an exceptionally designed card, and I love it. I mean, I don't play any decks that use it, but I know when I face that that against that card, I can't go to two. It's almost like reckless swing, mm-hmm. but on but on an arm piece, right? So what a fantastic card. Yeah, it's it's so cool. I think like it will be one of those cards that I think will be like the like landmark for th- like the actual paradigm shift in design with LSS, right? Because you look at that and you're just like, "Oh, wow. They they like really did it." And now we see more of that like as we we've progressed through this year which we saw a lot of these like huge choices it's a great choice um my favorite weapon was barb castaway i don't use it that much but i kind of like the flexibility of it uh Mm -hmm. which is kind of funny literally uh it's very (laughs) flexible um and and i I like i like it in draft and i also like it in some builds with uh in, in in like constructed blitz and cc I think you can do stuff with it. Unfortunately, not unfortunately, but there are just better options on the in the bow yeah. slot most of the time. But if you want to do aim counters, Barb Castaway is awesome to to do that with. And then my equipment is trench. It's the most yeah. like smooth card that like at least in Riptide and that, like you know we saw it see play in Lexi as well, which was pretty interesting, you know, for some matchups. But the fact that trench like is is like powerful but like not like yeah. you're not like i don't think anybody's like god like this is like destroying my like my game plan it doesn't feel like it doesn't even feel like tunic right like tunic you're just like god like they keep getting that extra resource but trench is yeah. just like oh it's like a hidden value right because yeah. you're smoothing out hands you're smoothing out arsenals creating some resources that maybe you wouldn't have been able to make otherwise and uh, it's just cool. And it's a pirate thing. Yeah, I mean, it's a treasure chest, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. how, can you, how can you go wrong with the treasure chest? It is so cool. Now, what's your favorite run-of-the-mill car from Outsiders? Car you put in your deck? I, this is tough. Mm-hmm. I uh, There are a lot of good cards. I mean, honorable mentions to uh, the Blood Rot Shot. Honorable mention to, you know, um, Isolate. Mm-hmm. What a fantastic card! But one card above all other cards for in me for, for me in this set just shows how amazing the set was, and it's Dishonor. I oh yeah, love Dishonor. Um, I mean, I hate the fact that it will work, <laughs> you know, that it does it does what it does. But like, the Katsu can actually turn off the hero a hero ability. Like mm-hmm. it's like something that nobody else can do, and 
I mean, you can do it temporarily. Yeah, for one turn. The sleep dart and all that stuff, and like, and you know, heroes have the ability to do it. But the, it almost feels like the quintessential combo piece. Like, there's no other combo. I mean, there are some really good combo pieces, obviously, in Ninja. Um, but wow, when you hit a dishonor line, like. It is. It feels like nothing else in the game. Maybe Kano, I guess. I don't want to take Kano away. You know, Kano, uh, Kano <laughs> combo is one little thing. But I mean, like, you know, taking away a hero's ability for the whole game is just such a crazy concept. And you know, Katsu is built for it, right? Yeah. And so, you know, the fact that it's just a blue block three that costs zero and attacks for two with combo. I mean, that it's just it's it's the best card for everything that Katsu wants to be doing. So inherently, it's just a really good combo card that also is thematically really on brand for what a ninja wants to do. So I love it. I love that card so much. And if you look at it, right, and you look at that combo line, you're playing just powerful cards before yeah. you even get there to the yeah. Dishonor. So like, you win. like I mean, it's, win. it's just yeah. like such a yeah. good line yeah. of play, which is uh, pretty cool. Right. you're not sacrificing anything like many other lines it's yeah yeah you gotta play some clunkers and none of them are at all which is which is really neat and and, and i'm glad that katsu got some you know support in outsiders because you know when Phi came out it was just it was the Phi show right it wasn't yeah. there was no real big boost to katsu now my favorite run of the mill card is codex of Inertia. Uh, Frailty is really good, but it's very controversial. Blood Rot yeah. is... Um, I think I like Blood Rot. Uh, <laughs> Blood Rot's got a great personality. Um, and uh, <laughs> no, Codex of Inertia is one of those cards that's like, oh, wow, if I could make this card work, it becomes better than Frailty, yeah. right? Because your opponent doesn't get a choice. They still have to discard that you can clunk up their whole arsenal. And if you have some regency or agency over, over what you're doing in the top of your deck, you could really just blow them out with yeah. Codex of Inertia. But uh, unfortunately, I don't think currently it's, it can get to that point, but well, I, I play it against a lot of Kano's and a lot of Bravo's locally. And that is one of their least favorite cards. Oh, true, true, true. They love a pitch stack. Those two. Mm -hmm. Um, Codex of Inertia basically says screw your pitch deck and also discard a card. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, what a great card. So good. So good. And you know, it was, I mean, this is like a weird tangent, but like I was like trying to figure out how to make Codex of Inertia work in Riptide. Uh, the one definite way you can do it is, I mean, you could do it in, in almost any version, but you, you always want something zero cost, right? come off yeah. the top that you can just play and um because you're going to replace the card anyway with ponder but i found that you can play like the the trade-in cards the ones that get oh, go again yeah. from from arsenal but they're all pretty weak like you're you, you can give them plus three with like premeditate and seek and stuff like that but there's only coming in i mean six is great six with go again is great and you get some cool little effects that they have but Funny enough, there's like some cool stuff you can do with, uh, oh man, Sand Scour Bow, right? Let's oh. say you you block three cards and then you play Codex of Inertia. You get a card in, and if it's something you can't play, you can trench it, activate Sand Scour Bow, you get your second shot. Wow. And it's kind of neat, kind of neat. Uh, I tested it. It's, it's not that good, uh, but... Cool idea. Good it's idea. a cool idea. Uh, now let's talk about Dust Till Dawn. Oh man, here we go. What what yeah, what we thought might have been the last supple, supplemental set, but I believe James White said that they're not done with them, but they'll probably return in a different yeah. way, which is probably for the best. I think they can have a purpose, but they can't be a whole season, I don't think. Yeah. But what what was your take on Dust Till Dawn as like, you know, from an outside perspective? Man, what a set. Like so, I mean, I'm very biased, obviously. Runeblade player, I got a set that was dedicated to my class. Um, you know, Outsiders, very similar. If you play the, one of those three classes, you got stuff for that. But I think Dust Till Dawn is going to be 
you know, so going back, just jumping a little bit further back to 2022 here, I love Dynasty. I think that the stat set is fantastic. I think what it brought to the different classes, like all the different, like you mentioned, Sandscour Bow coming up. We've got Rock. You know, all of these different cards that got thrown into this set that feel almost like, why is this even in here? You know, Mm -hmm. that is kind of, I kind of what I love about supplemental sets um and dust till dawn was not really that like we got like we got some of these like weird one-off ex- almost expansion slot type cards like you know united we stand like we still don't know what a party is but we have a card that says party on it right <laughs> um you know like we, we get all these like all these great cards for bolton for levia for prism new prism and obviously been set we get a viscerai specialization that is not played but it's still very good, still great to see. Um, you know, I love my heroes for for my people in the Buzz Discord. My my Discord name was uh, Create New Deck Scroll to V. I love my heroes <laughs> VIS. You know, because I love Inset, I love Viserai, and you know, it's really nice that the the Shadow Runeblade players got something new to play in Blitz, especially because Chains now banned in both formats. So it would be really nice to get another you know another Runeblade for them, and they got one right. Um, I loved it. I love what I love Runegate. I love what it did for Bolton, especially like Bolton got some nuts cards. Um, New Prism is crazy. I love her, um, especially because Mavrian Skies and Angels is a great time. Um, but and Leviah, I mean, a demi hero. Like, what can you? You like you? It's such a d- d- dense set that has so much flavor in it that also had like signed like uh serialized cards in it like <laughs> like that nobody really even thinks about it's just like it's just crazy what a what a jam-packed set full of flavor that is not a true supplemental set it almost feels like a draft set that they couldn't finish yeah and so i just really wish that's my biggest flaw with it is that if they could make it draftable like a monarch an actual monarch two and just do the expansion slot thing like they did with bright lights which we'll get to then mm-hmm. i think bright i think dust dawn could have been a a, an all-star set but i think that the fact that it's a supplemental set really brings it down a bit yeah absolutely i think that you make a great point if they had implemented that model for that it would have been it would have been just so cool but you know at the time we didn't know what we were missing yeah, so exactly. you know now we do and we're gonna judge it solely on that now um but yeah you're, you're right it was a it was really i mean it was the flavor win of the year that that has to be you know without a doubt we get to see part two of this war of the monarch we get to see Leviah kind of ascend in a way you know we still don't know like chains like off doing whatever chains doing but vincent comes in and vincent's like all scarier than chain <laughs> like i mean not not gameplay wise but like definitely lore wise you're like Oh my God. Like it says yeah. terrifying uh, prisms back, you know, with this, uh, a fixed version of prison and, you know, we're, we're starting to see where the power level can go with prism. Now, finally, that some other decks have left the format, at least in uh, CC and, and Bolton got like, you know, Bolton's just every set, just a little more, a little more. Or and then next- I mean, it's just like he's so close. Like he's just so close. <laughs> and he could. I mean, he's he's at a, a really good point right now. I mean, um, Yuki Lee Bender took him the top eight at the twenty k, right? Like, yeah. this is this is a this is could be the set that we look back for both Levi and Bolton specifically. We're like, oh, this is when it they got pushed just enough to where they were actually really competitive. Now. Let's do our fresh faves for it. I think our heroes are going to be the same because we only got two new heroes. I didn't want to yeah. count um, Leviah and Bolton really uh, here because, you know, they, they've they been around. Uh, but what is your favorite hero? Oh, I mean, Vincent, no yeah. question. Like, Vincent is just... I mean, I remember when we were doing the Budverse Bellow 4 when she was released and, like, we saw her ability. And my biggest thing was, like, y'all don't forget this this trigger because it is such a it's such a it's such a crazy ability right you have to banish a card from your hand every turn and then you make a room chant Mm -hmm. 
that is there's so much power to that ability like you in your deck building decisions that you kind of have to plan ahead to ha always have a three card hand um i mean and part of the reason why i love her, love her so much is you can kind of play the game without spending any real resources like you could literally just play off of your rune gate banish off of your tunic banish like tunic resource um you know i i mean the the way i the way i squealed when i saw when i saw her and and how excited i was for the fact that you know we get another rune blade get to try a new a new hero in blitz um yeah i love her she's the best yeah she's so cool i mean i she's my favorite from the set i mean it, it was it was really her or the new prism but you know, she was a huge flavor win. Chain was the first deck I really played. So, like, yeah. it was cool to see a different take on Shadow Rune Blade. I appreciate this take of Shadow Rune Blade a lot more than Chain. Although, you know, Chain was really cool. But, you know, we, we learned that Chain's yeah. ability was, was pretty well, busted. Yeah. It's, so, it's really explosive to draw five cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? It's, uh, in, a, in a game where you only have four cards, having five more... Seems pretty good. So, yeah, Vincent was was really neat, and I think uh, maybe balanced, but like I think Vincent could de definitely benefit from, you know, the new expansion slot card for Rune Blades. Uh, you know, a lot of people are talking about that, and Vincent's had some some success in both Blitz and CC. Um, now, what's your favorite weapon from the set? Because we got a lot of cool weapons. This is tough. So I was looking at the offhands as well. Um, cause we've got the tome. I forget what the name it is of it is off the top of my head. I don't really play Grimoire? that often. Grimoire. Grimoire yeah. of the Damned. Yeah. Um, Grimoire of the Dead. Amazing card. I love, I love it. It's visually amazing. The cold foil is so beautiful, but there's one weapon I think in all of the, the that stands above the rest and it's gotta be Scepter of Pain for me. It's cool um, Scepter. Scepter of Pain is such a crazy card. Like, if you think about the the fact that you have... So, Runeblade doesn't have many one-handed options, right? She, they're not like other classes where, you know, we've got the Flail of Agony, or I think that's what it's called. Scepter of Agony. I forget. I forget. I'm sorry. I don't have the cards memorized. <laughs> I've been, you know, I've been, haven't been, like, reading my cards, I guess. I've just been playing them. Comment also below them. how bad he is I, at memorizing I, cards. I've been playing Nebula Blade more than the Scepter. But anyway. That's okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, but the, um, but yeah, anyway, the, the ability to have, you know, a weapon that will deal arcane damage without popping all of your rune chance is kind of really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, we also like, it also is really good. Like, so if you're playing aggro of set, right. The, um, and blitz, I, I play, um, the, the flail and the, and scepter of pain. And if you're on turn one, especially my red, you can just like filter your whole hand into it. You can do two reds into it and just deal one arcane damage. And now, obviously, if they have arcane barrier, they can pitch into it as well. But like, I've seen some people not play arcane barrier into Vincent because it's some it's most of the time it's, it's unpreventable anyway. And if you're just doing aggro, like mm -hmm. you just you're just trying to beat them and be faster because blocking is hard. So you know, like it's a very nice filtering option for Rune Blade. It's also a fantastic just like flavor card because you know the, the disciples of pain and the scepter of pain and then just so yeah I, I love i love that that weapon yeah it's really neat and it was it, it was cool to actually see it see play right yeah. because the people were trying to grimoire and then and then obviously there was like the rosetta still was legal at one point yeah. and and but now it seems like the choice which is really neat um What's your favorite? Oh, I guess I got to talk about my favorite weapon. My favorite weapon was Hellhammer, right? Yeah. Simple, two for six, banishes itself, turns off blood debt. I mean, I would have been playing that if it came out in Monarch. I think it, it, I mean, yeah. it, it was just, you know, whatever. You don't get to swing with it a lot, but or you only get to well, swing with it once. <laughs> Not even a lot. Or into Auras, right? It doesn't die into Auras. Oh, it doesn't die into the Spectra. Yeah, which was, which was, yeah. uh, very cool, but so does um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Hexagore. Hexagore. Not that that one goes away, but you don't get dealt damage, uh, which nice. is cool. But yeah, Hellhammer really just neat. Just makes sense, and it's one of those yeah. things where you're like, well, who cares if this banishes itself? And then you read Leviathan's 
text and mm-hmm. you're like, oh, it just says a card with six attack. It doesn't say yeah. attack action card or anything like that, which was, uh, you know, good on them for reading the card as well, you know? <laughs> yeah, isn't that crazy? You think about it, like, Monarch, what, 2021, right? It was yeah. Monarch, I forget when it was. Probably designed in 2020. Yeah, two, three years later, you have a weapon that triggers off Leviathan's ability and is like, as Ethan calls it, a, like a panic button. Yeah. You know, like that is crazy. It's really cool. It's a, it's a really thematic. Hellhammer is a great choice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, what about equipment? This is going to be no surprise to anybody. Um, the best piece of equipment in the whole set is Dyadic Carapace. I don't care what you say about anything else in this set. I mean, I care what you say, Tommy. I do care. But <laughs> Dyadic Carapace single-handedly might have changed like the the way that Viscerai can handle arcane barrier matchups. Like obviously I put more a lot of thought into this, a lot of theory into into playing Runeblade. But the ability to have a three block temper piece that also has arcane barrier two on it is not something that we have seen since like you know like um Arcanite Skullcap. But our AB3 is so much worse. Yeah, yeah, it is. AB3 is just so bad. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Skullcap. Um, <laughs> but, but like having the ability to, so the Runeblade setup now is Dyadic Carapace, Vex and Quill Hand, and then you have AB3 off of two pieces, which is nuts. It's nuts. Like, I'm sorry. Like, that is really cool because you can still pop your gloves to be able to still have AB2, but. We also got another great card from um, from Dynasty, Amethyst Tiara, to pair with that. Oh, yeah. So Amethyst Tiara now gives you this Runeblade Spell Void option that you can do at an instant speed. So you're sitting there with a chest piece that blocks for three, a head piece that can be an X amount of Spell Void. You get to play Spellbound Creepers, because I was playing Null Room Boots into Kano mm. before this. So I like I love Carapace. I just think that card is three cards stapled together. Like, and I don't care honestly. Like the card is so good. The art, the full art is amazing. Like if the person oh, yeah. who I don't know the artist, but if you've ever seen the full art, it's a person who has like a magic hand and then the sword, and it's so like cool because you know obviously Runeblade is physical and magical, and so the duality of the physical and the arcane protection, it just yeah, there's no there's no card better in 2023 for me than Dyadic Carapace. I'm oh, sorry. in 2023, yeah, that's wow! My holy, that's my favorite. Holy Easily. smokes! Like, I mean, it changed it changed Runeblade like as as a whole. I can't argue with raw stats, right? And yeah. flexibility. So, like, you know, that card is awesome. Yeah, it's so just I, it's boring. It's boring as hell. It's like, boring. When I saw it's, this, it's just I was stats. Like, this card is boring as hell. But it is so good. <laughs> it's effective. It's a very effective. Yeah. To no you? surprise, my favorite equipment. Well, it's just the darkness cycle, but mostly grasp of darkness. Uh, it really gave Leviah this really uh, nice option. If you didn't want to run, I mean, I guess you could run it with with scab skin, right? You could just like you could just totally fridge up Crown of Providence, grasp of darkness, carrying husk, and and uh, the scab skins, but if you wanted to s- still get like some good value out of your like go again or like getting go again out of your boots, you can run uh, the hooves mm-hmm. and the grasp of darkness, and that's still the same amount of block that you were getting from from gambler's gloves scab skin, right? You're still getting three block out of those two cards, so yeah. it's it's really it's really nice, and it's like. And then if you want to turbo out some blood debt, like you can just run those uh, darkness cards uh, and you try to get to the, the flip uh, on the, the redeem, Levi redeem, not the Blasmin fit, uh, but very, very good. And also just good into like Kano, which is, which yeah. is also oh, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah the, the ability to get free blood debt off equipment is just so nice for you guys. Like it's yeah. 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 It's yeah, and I think it, like there, I think there's some untapped potential for the darkness cycle in Levia in Blitz, which yeah. um, you know obviously it's not the forefront of everybody's mind, so we might not just see it. But I think 
there's something there where you can turbo out like some crazy blood debt, flip, yada yada yada, win the game, yeah. uh, win worlds, and retire. Um, but what's your favorite run of the milk card? Now, you know, in my notes here, I wrote the widespread cycle, which the widespread cycle is one of the best set cycles we've gotten in a while. We don't get many cycles in the game. Um, you know, there's a lot of there's there's a few for like you know either like the prism has heralds and you know the angels have the angels right but the widespread cycle um if you're not familiar is a rune gate cards that have increasing costs two three four um and it's red yellow blue and they have very powerful they attack for six um they're very powerful when the combat chain closes for if each person lost a life if, for each person that lost a life you get an effect mm -hmm. um yellow widespread destruction is insane like that card is is it's so stupid it's command and conquer essentially but it doesn't have to hit um it's command and conquer but it banishes so you don't get it back with codex of frailty which is insane we don't even need to get into the power <laughs> but like i love that card so much but i really do think that my favorite card like one of the mill cards like that i will always put in my deck my especially vincent deck is the Phantom Wraith man. Like it's so good. Like, so if you you're probably familiar with this, but the ability to a rune gate two for six is insanely powerful. Um yeah. so widespread ruin is the two for six on the majestic side, but Phantom Wraith is the rare yeah. or the common, I forget. I, it's, I think it I forget which one it is. But so that means there's a blue and there's a yellow. And the ability to present eight damage off of a two card hand is just kind of stupid like yeah. it's so stupid like you have to it's it's like it's like wounded bull except there's also arcane barrier involved um and it can be a one card hand too like if you don't if you have two room chance you can present that and it's like butter for your deck um so Vantum wraith i just i don't know that if you're when you when you said run of the mill just now <laughs> i changed my mind like i was like yeah that's a run of the mill card that i am so excited to play um uh, shout out to deathly whale as well for being broken but um phantom wraith is just it's just the butter you want to you know it's the garlic you it's, know it's, it's the garlic it's more you stats it, you're you're on a, you're just a stats guy now you know you don't care about flay you i want stats which i mean hey listen yeah. th those are great stats um my favorite so i don't want to say levi redeem blasm that i think it, it transcends everything like obviously that's the coolest thing from the set like it, it's yeah. hard for anybody to argue otherwise right it's it was an yeah. awesome reveal ethan did a great job and we got this like it changed it's changed all the deck completely yeah it created a mini game within the deck which was really neat so it's worth mentioning but i don't want to give it to it because there's also a lot of really other cool things and obviously i love levi redeem blast effect consumed um but my favorite run of the mill cards is the bannerets actually i think the design there was like like simple like yeah no doubt let's let's give bolton more cards that care about getting charged rather yeah. than charging and we get these really neat cards some cool i think this is the full art one i have the full art right in front of me yeah, yeah how about that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but like the, it's just a it's just a nice step in the right direction for bolton design and yeah. i i i like it and you know hey listen they they, they planted their feet too they're like yellow matters it's a light mm -hmm. The light talent cares about yellows is uh, much to uh Pat Shaw's chagrin. It is uh it's going to be the yellow deck. But the bannerets are really neat. I like them. It was like, okay, that's cool. I can't wait to like see which ones are the best. Like some of them are better than others and and but I think as as a as a cycle it's really nice. Now brings us to the present. Bright yeah. lights. The most Future, recent well. set. Yeah, the future, uh, yeah. present, oh, one, something, different dimension. <laughs> uh, Bright Lights is the mech-only set from this mm -hmm. fall where, you know, it was a draft set, so we did get the draft. Uh, they introduced Crack Shuffle Play. I don't know how much of that was actually played. I think that yeah. it was a great idea on its surface, 
but I don't know in practice it happened a lot. But it was also pretty easy to just play regular sealed with only four packs because they were all mechanologists. Now, what was your? I, I know you were a fan of this set as as a, as a very um, new player focused player yourself. Um, what were your thoughts? Yeah, so this set, I um, I came into this set with extremely high hopes. I will say that this set, I think, was extremely um, like if what's interesting is you look at these three these three sets in the list and you say outsiders dust till dawn bright lights i would argue that people have negative feelings about most of these sets for different reasons mm -hmm. um like outsiders they didn't they don't like codex of frailty i mean and maybe that's just 2023 the theme of yeah. you know <laughs> if people having an attitude about sets but you know dust till dawn they didn't like that they didn't like it because it was a supplemental set um and this one they didn't like it because it was one set I will go down and say that this set is of the three probably my favorite because solely from what you were saying, right? The ability to just pick up a deck and play it, the simplicity of sealed. Like wh when I tell you, like I we like I've played a lot of limited. I that's my favorite way to play. I know it's part of your one of your favorite favorite ways to play, if not your favorite. Mm -hmm. Um but when I sit down and I play like played like a team sealed with my friends, we opened a box, we did a team sealed, and each of us picked a different hero out of the out of that. And then you know someone's playing Teclavos, and someone's playing Dash, someone's playing Max, and the decks build the decks build themselves almost with a little bit of with a little bit of like flexibility um, between there. You know maybe Dash wants the better items versus you know Tecla wants all the Evos that kind of thing. Like it, it's it's so crazy how fluid the cards feel when you open this the pack like you can open the pack and you say this card sucks right but if you think about it in the context of a draft like what's razzle dazzle right mm -hmm. that card is that card's bad like no one's playing that outside of limited right but nobody else nobody in magic draft is playing a two drop two two but you need it you know yeah right true like so it's just one of those things when we were doing the butter spell, right? It's like, we want stats. We want the three for six. I don't care what it does. We just want a three for six. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, it, it's so, it's so back to basics while still adding such a level of complexity that really makes me love flesh and blood a lot because like, you know, we also got a Demi hero in this set, right? We also got these expansion slots, more stuff for Bolton. Um, yeah. You know, like this set, is like i opened a lot of this set and i you know i think that the biggest issue that i actually have with this is well there's another thing i have an issue with and it's it's started back in dust till dawn but it, it, it here it's in what even more impactful is the is the majestic heroes um yeah, the majestic yeah. heroes for me in this set in particular like are a big issue um uh, because they are like if you're starting this is a completely this is a draft set right like this is you're supposed to get new people to play this how are people going to transition to cc if you know you're getting one hero in a case you know what i mean like that is for me very a huge issue long term um it makes box openings feel bad and it also is difficult for new players to get access to it i also think that they really fumbled the bag with crack shuffle play um i'm a huge crack shuffle play component uh, proponent here uh mm. as, or we call it um what is it uh crack shuffle play iowa style <laughs> and <laughs> the dagan white um and his rudy i think is his his uh armory runner is he came up with the the oh, pack yeah. sack <laughs> yeah what well, so the problem with what lss is doing with crack shuffle play is they tried to make it fit into the rules of a traditional like flesh and blood draft environment or sealed, mm -hmm. right? But the fun of crack shuffle play is you just open the pack, shuffle it all together, and then you play, right? Yeah. But they put they put these they put these uh, teclo bases in a different slot of the pack, making it impossible for you to just do that without yeah. drawing those cards. Um, like the most fun you can, I think you can have with crack shuffle play is just playing Welcome to Raid. You know, everybody gets, you know, everybody gets a foil, everybody gets a piece of equipment, and then everybody gets six rares or better, right? Yeah. But with the newer, with this set, it doesn't really work. Um, I was really excited for it, but I am 
disappointed in the way it played out because of some of the ways that they're changing the pack order. It's still my favorite set of these three because it is just so interesting and revolutionary and I love it. I love the way that they've, they've built the set to be like this hyper-focused while still being super flexible, you know, value-driven set. But I think there are a lot of misses that I was really excited for that didn't pan out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I... I ended up loving drafting this set, right? Sealed, I played a couple times. It was it was fine. I felt like it was probably better than some of the sealed sets that we've had, um, which I think is inherent of of having just one class. Uh, I didn't love the 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 CC aspects of it, but I will say this will be the the set that goes down in history as oh, this is the first expansion slot set. This will be like kind of a a landmark for for that going forward. We're gonna get. We saw that we're having in heavy hitters, and hopefully mm-hmm. we continue to have them in draft sets. It's a really elegant way to solve problems in the meta or or, or buff up different cards, uh, you know, or different heroes. So yeah, I I think the the crack shuffle play thing. I think yeah, it, it, it effectively didn't work the way we wanted it to. But also like like I know that we got information about it. Like, cause we are invested in the game and we saw it on the announcement, but I don't, I, I, and this might be just me blanking on it, but I don't know if I saw any kind of like literature about it in the flesh and blood at the LGS level, which is where you want this to happen. Right. And I think that maybe some marketing material there could have really helped, even if it effectively didn't work the way we wanted it to, if we had, had something to look at and be like, Oh, okay, this is, this is something cool, whatever, you know, it, it could be even like a table tent or something like that for the tables at LGS. I think that would be yeah. a smart, cool way to do it. Like, yeah, I that, think, yeah. Yeah. It, it's interesting because like when we were, so when we in Dallas, when we were there, that was the first time, I think that was the first event where they had bright lights. Um, and there were no real official rules for crack shuffle play. Right. And so that's the crazy thing. You're right. There should have been some sort of marketing material for it. You know, if I could sit down and ask three and say three things to James White, you know, there's a lot. I, I, I bet you could think of two of them. Um, the third one, is like, <laughs> I know at least the third, one. The third one. Yeah, at least one. The third one would be what's going on with crack shuffle play because mm-hmm. it's such a concept that is so good and like i prefer it it's my favorite limited it's what i love i want to hoard welcome to wraith boxes just to sit on them to play crack shuffle play with the unofficial rules mm-hmm. but because there's no official way to play it where you you know don't look at the packs then it it becomes like it it loses that that glimmer of joy i think you know like it's marketed in a way that should be more, should be better marketed. You know what I mean? Right? Like that's yeah. my point. Yeah. And, and I think that even James White in a recent interview mentioned, maybe he wasn't super stoked with how it ended up playing out. Um, you know, I could be putting words in his mouth, but, um, but the nice thing is, and like, you know, we'll talk, you know, it's part of my wishes for 2024, but uh, it seems like the language of onboarding, like player onboarding is yeah. has been used like that that verbiage has been used by LSS and i think crack shuffle play was the first time we saw them try it like like yeah. not use it but like that was like a like oh let's this this will work yeah. with this all mech set yeah. let's just like you know do it but hopefully we see some kind of like like official push for onboarding and i don't think it's going to be crack shuffle play uh, i would imagine it's going to be some kind of pre-con CC pre-con or something like that. Something that classic battle should have been or something like that. But let's talk about our favorite cards in bright lights. Let's do some positive stuff about bright lights. And, yeah. uh, you know, what was your favorite? I think Who? bright lights is very positive. It's oh just, yeah. You yeah. Know, like it, there are, the, it's just very, you know, there's certain things that I was excited for and you told you, I think they, they're, 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 they're paying attention. Yeah. My favorite hero Hands down, Teclavasan. No question. Oh. Teclavasan is, I mean, I prefer the professor, but, you know, we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, 
Tecla Hawson is such a crazy concept of a hero because it changes everything we know about flesh and blood and it makes it, you know, you get your first almost um, building for the long game hero that isn't just a pitch deck. Now, doesn't mean it's working right now. It doesn't mean he's very good. It just means that he's actually like seeing, he's actually, the game's growing. Um, you know, I, you know, We'll get to we'll get to it when we get to like the, the cards, equipment, and all that stuff. But like, he, evos are nuts, man. Like evos are basically just free armor in your deck. You just have to draw them. Mm-hmm. Um, and Tech of Austin being able to play them out of the banner zone is just a five card hand every game, every turn. You know, like it's it's a really strong ability, but it's not good enough for the CC meta. Insane for Blitz on the Professor, but we'll get to that when we talk about around the table. Yeah, well, Teclovasan is interesting because, well, Powerhouse and Limited, you know, but but we're looking at Constructed here. Certainly, I mean, I've seen, I've, I've lost to some Teclovasans. I play a lot of games, and, you know, eventually they get the singularity, and and oh. that's when they win, typically. Uh, it's very good, but it's a one of in the deck. So, like, it, it, it's, it's all in, which is okay. I think that's okay to have a deck like that, yeah. right? I think that's Super flavorful, and I like that that that's the best way for Teclavasan to win. It's like, oh, we made this really cool demi hero card. This is going to be your this. You want to do this, right? Mm-hmm. Not only because it's really cool, but because it's gonna, you know, really lead to some big wins. Uh, but it's just it's just hard to do. But that's okay. It can yeah. it we can have things that are hard to do. It can't, you know, it, not everything has to be easy, and. And he's the bad guy, kind of. So let's, you know, that's okay. Another, another shadow. Another, another shadow. shadow. Yeah. <laughs> um, my favorite hero is Max the Hype Nitro. He just just kind of speaks to me on a lot of levels. Just like, you know, smash and grab, and just like, you know, like just a a chaotic kind of character. Uh, really like that. Kind of hates technology as much as I do, and uh, really neat. Now, what what's your favorite weapon? There was only three, oh, right? Yeah, I don't know if we got any weapons in the expansion slot. But uh, no, we didn't. We, didn't. we have an expansion it. slot weapon next set. Yeah, the Graven Call. Yeah, I, I mean, I love the Tekla Leveler, man. What a card! Like in limited, the fact that that's the only permanent weapon in the format is actually kind of crazy when you think about it, right? Like. All the other all the other character heroes in the set have this signature weapon that Teclavasan can't play, but they also require you to do the thing that they, that hero wants you to do in order to attack. Mm-hmm. Very flavorful. But Tecla Leveler is just such a like such a fantastic like it's it's it starts out as nothing, but in the end, it's a one for three go again. Like that is insane. Um, with no drawback other than you have to have armor on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do have to work for it. I do like that, especially in limited, you could you could play Teclo Leveler and and, yeah. and Max and I don't know if you'd ever want to do it in Dash, but maybe yeah. maybe there's a there's a world. Um but no, it, it is pretty cool. You know, it so so kind of unassuming. You're like, oh, you, they got to get all the armor. It's not going to be a problem yeah. for a while. And then all of a sudden they're like, well, three go again. You know, I'll block out three go again. You know, you're just like, oh, okay, yeah. this is the worst. Um, <laughs> Banksy's mine. Yeah. Obviously. It's a wrench. It's awesome. Not a gun, <laughs> as they say. Uh, and and it's really cool because, like, you, you pitch the blue, right? You get your yeah. your hyper driver and then you, you crank it and crank, you, you bank it. it. And it just is the coolest thing. And you're just like, all right, we're, we're really doing it. We're cranking and banking. <laughs> and it, oh, the cold foil looks awesome too, which uh, is next month, I believe. Yeah. yeah. I think next month. Uh, it's going to be big. We had symbiosis and then we had Squizzy and Floof. Yeah. Uh, what a card. What's your favorite equipment from this set? So I took this. It's equipment, yeah, yeah. but it's not really equipment. I love Evo Soul Head in particular. Is that the, um, it's the Evo? It's the blue intellect it's one. The, yeah, it's the yeah. intellect one. Yeah. Um, what a frigging card, dude! Like, oh my god, 
Um, those cards, the Evo Soul Cycle is so strong, but they're 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 knocked down by the fact that they cost four. Like they're so expensive to play in Teklavasa, but not in Professor. So <laughs> that's like the fact that they are so strong outside of CC. It blows my mind. Like, and what's hilarious is that the arms are actually played in just regular Nash now, um, mm-hmm. because people realize that hey, having five block on my armor that I can just draw another one and put it on top can just it's just like better than any arm piece in de- in in mech right like the evo souls are just so good like it the fact that they cost four is a huge drawback obviously but imagine if you could just play blue unmovable at any point in time and that's what that's what these are these are arm pieces that are blue unmovable for four um that's how i look at them i yeah. look at them like that because like dash wants to play unmovable but this is also a blue movable that could just block three. Um, Gary, the stats it, guy, back at it. That's at it again. But the fact <laughs> that you can just build on top of your robot also is mm-hmm. just so insane. Like, I mean, I when we first read that card and it, you know, it said you gain one intellect when you build an Evo, we were like, oh my God, this is amazing. But then there you have to think, okay, well, actually, no, I need to build on top of it or I need to build something underneath it and then build on top of it to get the ability. And that's when you have the sentry bases come into play. Mm -hmm. Like, so thematically you're literally building a Gundam. It's awesome. So cool. I mean, like, but numbers wise. Yeah. The, you can't beat the numbers, right? You can't beat the the stats. No, especially (laughs) when the cost three. So yeah, head arms for sure. Definitely. I mean, they're cool. I mean, they're, they feel unbeatable when they do flip. Uh, you're just like, Oh God. Um, yeah. mine's hyper X three. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. I, I mean, like, I like hyper drivers. I know that they don't block and they're not necessarily good when they're in your hand and, uh, you're facing down lethal, but I think it's really cool to boost them away and draw some cards. So, yeah. and more cards for the mech too, right? Yeah. More so- cards for the mechanoid. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, it's just, it's just cool. It's just cool. It's like it, it, it represents everything that hyperdrivers want to do. Just go fast and create resources. It just keep going. Uh, really, really neat. Hyper X3. And I don't know, like a, a sleek motorcycle helmet. You know, what's, what's, yeah. you know, what's not to like about that? You know, it's like it still blocks too. It's got battle worn. So, God, it's like a nice, I guess, uh, motor, you want a helmet to be pretty protective it's the first mech helmet that blocks that's crazy like you can actually like keep it and block with it Mm -hmm. and turn into a a nitro it's so good so good they knew what they were doing what's your favorite run the mill card though i you know i want to be boring i'm gonna be boring here but the note says singularity okay Okay. the note says singularity because transforming into singularity into the <laughs> Mechlovasin or whatever his name is. Yeah. It's so so stupid. <laughs> yeah. But I love it. Mech Mechropotent. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I mean there's so many good cards in this set, man. I mean zero to fifty. Like, what a card. Yeah. <laughs> what a card. <laughs> you can get it zero to sixty, you get a ticket for that. I mean yeah. like, there's too many to mention. Moonshot? What a moonshot's insane, dude. <laughs> like, Moonshot's awesome. Moonshot combo is is nuts, but yeah, like I, I'm gonna be boring and just say singularity because like there are. I mean, I I am at the point with the professor deck where I'm actually not playing it that much mm-hmm. because it's a liability. But that card is so damn cool. Like you cannot you cannot tell me that there's a cooler card other than maybe the cool cycle cycle helmet, right? Or cycle helmet is pretty. Sick. Yeah, yeah, but like. That card, you literally you put all your shit into a pile. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> all your shit into a pile, and then your whole your whole game plan is a little pile. <laughs> um, like insane. Um, also, the the I've had well, one of the best games of Flesh and Blood I ever played was a mirror of the professor and a uh, professor mirror, and we both transformed. Oh my! <laughs> and, uh, yeah, is that insane. even allowed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's insane. You just the, you're on Talishar, and the UI is just 
your deck, your graveyard, and then two cards in the uh, middle. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, it's just thematically it's so great too. But it's yeah. really cool. I mean, you know, and, and I'm glad it's hard to do because it is yeah. very, very tough to beat. Um, there, I mean, obviously there's some like cool ways you can just like win the game by killing the the mech suit, but yeah, pretty cool. My my favorite's intoxicating shot. It's it's a uh, yeah. I, I think that card's awesome, right? You know, here's yeah. here you can have a quicken and a courage if you want to just take a little bit. You can just block three. It's coming in for four. You can take one, and then you get all these cool things that you get to play with. And then, and then you attack, and then I trap you to death. Sometimes <laughs> it was funny actually at the at the brawl, the 10k in, in Columbus. I played against a dash IO, and I I got to the point where I they took it, and they had the courage and quicken, and then they w- realized soon that like, oh no, I'm at like two health. I can't attack i can yeah. and i kept uh arsenal passing and just trenching it away arsenal pass and like basically just waited right and they're like all right well you know i had more cards they had to attack eventually he's like either uh i have it or i don't so mm-hmm. and i did which was because you know uh riptide just is the best ever but it, it's i love the that that design was like okay this is a trap, but it's not a trap. It's a trap. Don't don't take the damage. And then like, and then the cool thing you could do, obviously, you can you can do lace with blood rot, yeah. and all of a sudden it's coming in for seven. And yeah, you get those two things, but you also get a blood rot or inertia or seek and destroy whatever. It's it's firing on all cylinders. It's very very cool. So yeah. blue zero for four. Blues blues. Keep it, keep it on the numbers. Stats. We love stats. So that's our first phase of, of the of the three main sets. Uh, we have a, just a little bit we want to. I just wanted to touch on round the table. That was another bigger yeah. release, kind of like in conjunction with bright lights. I just want to know your quick thoughts on it, and do you did you think it accomplished what it needed to? Yeah, man. I love Around the Table. I think it's a fantastic product. Uh, we started with like 20 of them at the store and we're down to one. I think it's like our best selling best selling product. I mean, I bought two. That doesn't help. But <laughs> <laughs> um, be, for Flesh and Blood, just because like it is so good. You get four decks, you get a box and a play mat. I mean, what better? I mean, we sell it for 57, I think, right? Four decks, a box and a play mat for $57 is amazing like there's nothing better than a you know a build your own kit that actually is useful um i think the heroes in there were a little bit odd for a new player experience like melody i've seen a lot of people who've never played flesh and blood before just try to play melody because they like the concept of a bard and they feel like they're not attacking the whole game yeah you know um so I think that there could have been more flavor built into Melody and Brevin's a little bit weird, but I think it did exactly what it was intended to do. Um, I think people really are sleeping on the professor. That's just, you know, I, he got some, he got some LL points this skirmish season. And I think the Ira deck in there was a good choice, even if it does feel a bit weird for the goal of the, of the deck, I would give it an, an a minus. Yeah. I, I, I would give it a, yeah, a solid yeah yeah a solid fresh i think is is probably what we would call it but yeah i think it it might not have brought in as many new players as maybe they had hoped i'm not yeah. sure we don't know this is all anecdotal but i will say the biggest thing about this this product was it invigorated the upf crowd yep. and and brought more of the other flesh and blood players into it. Right. Like, you know, I, I went to armory and, you know, it was like, Oh, we got like an hour till, till armory UPF. And we got like a six player UPF game going. And, and it was like, I felt like that never happened. Like often, like, like, like not never happened, but like that was a rare occurrence. But ever since then it, it happens more often. And people are just like, well, I just have like, I built up my melody deck. I, 
I made like a really cool Teclovasa deck or I used those cards and, and built something that's another hero that I just like. And all of a sudden people are just more willing to play UPF, which I think is a going to be a long-term uh, positive uh, thing. And do you think they'll do another version of it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think they'll make it a lot less professor forward. Um, obviously this was like his, you know, launch product, but I think round the table concept is something that they'll try and do in the future, even though I don't understand why it's not around the table, but whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I never, I never really sunk in for me, but um, yeah, no, I think it, I think it, it did a great job. I think the Bard is still a little bit needs to be flushed out um, because she feels she's strong. She's really strong, mm -hmm. but she feels weird for new players. Um, and it, and it, with a product like that, you kind of don't want, to have to say, oh, let's not give the player the new player this one, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I get it, and yeah, Melody, while cool, I enjoyed it as I enjoyed Melody like a lot as a a player who's been in the game. A, a, yeah. Uh, but I am, I am really interested to see where what other products they do. It might not yeah. be with the professor, as you said. So we, we will see, Melody. I mean, I got to play, somebody lent me a beefed up melody deck and I was like, this is the coolest deck I've played in Flesh and Blood in a long time. Um, so, you know, I, I think it ended up being a success. I think you were right. Nice certified fresh. Um, what would you give this year for Flesh and Blood a rating? You know, I loved a lot of the little things they did. I love that the, uh, the LGS support they provided, like the freaking jack-o'-lanterns, man. I mean, that card, the jack-o'-lanterns, like, I love that they were just like, let's just, let's just put about a pumpkin on Halloween, you know? But on the, ten, on the, but they put it in the November armory kit. So like that, the, for me, I would boil it down to that, that mindset, right? Mm -hmm. I love everything they're trying to do. But they are showing their age. They're showing their their skin a little bit here with like the lack of you know they, they're not thinking everything through. Yeah. Um, they clearly have their hands full. Like if I were to give them a teacher grade, I would give them like a B plus. Um, you know, I wouldn't say stale at, in any way, shape, or form. I think some people could say this year was quite stale. Um, I'm thinking really critically about this this year when I say that like they tried a lot. They were very this was a very ambitious year. Um but some things fell flat, some things really excelled. Um I think if Crack Shuffle Play had been marketed better, I would have given it a hundred percent fresh. Like, but it's yeah, I would give it a B plus, you know, fresh, but not necessarily, you know, a low fresh. Yeah, I think that's pretty fair. They, I mean, the ambition, you're right on it, right? Like, we saw some crazy stuff, right? Hybrid cards, outsiders, demi hero, you know, craziness, yeah. supplemental set that's not supporting everything uh, with Dust Till Dawn, and then an all, all mech set with expansion slots. So they were, they were trying stuff and also around the table, right? So I, I, I would probably, maybe a B plus would be where I would land as well. I think Outsiders is going to be the bright, well, the bright light, you know, <laughs> when, when, when we look back, because yeah. I think, I mean, I think that draft set was awesome. You know, people might have some issues with it, like with Codex of Frailty or whatever. Uh, but I, I found that that one was, it felt really 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 fun the only the only difference i would have made with that set was and i understand why they did it especially for katsu i don't i don't know if i agreed with uh benji kind of entering the fray there i think it would have been nice to get like a new ninja um but i guess it was nice to give benji some support too but i feel like anytime you print something that's you know attacks for a little bit in ninja that it's kind of support but what do i yeah. know but it, i think it was overall a good year though and yeah. I'm looking forward to, to 2024. What are your wishes? 2024. Blitzfist Ray. But um, <laughs> that's not even a question because we've got a second, 
we've got another uh, another Sonata coming. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah, I'm looking forward to. I'm really looking forward to this UPF draft. Um, heavy hitters is going to be this like was going to be UPF draft, which is really cool. One of my favorite formats in Magic was Commander Legends draft, but the problem with that was that if you were drafting a Commander deck in a draft environment. This is flesh and blood. All flesh and blood games are kind of commander decks, mm -hmm. you know, um, in a way. And so I think that the pace of an ultimate pit fight game will be a lot better than a commander game. Um, I am really, I'm really, really hoping that we get more, um, more stuff for illusionist. Actually, like I think we need to see things other than Prism and Dromai. Um, I'm not saying that only as somebody who loves playing a class that beats the illusionist <laughs> but also i feel like there's a lot of seeds that are planted um and i think that people are sick of prism and i think people are getting sick of dromai um unfortunately because it's just kind of how it works people get yeah. tired yeah so i would love to see that and i really hope wizard players get to get some new cards i know they've been they've been sad for a while but i hope to see everybody's least favorite cute classes get cards <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah i think that's a yeah i i am looking at 2024 i'm hoping heavy hitters is as much of a success as it looks to be right i think these are three classes that are in that set that i think probably have some of the most passionate mm -hmm. fan bases uh you know outside of like illusionist and Runeblade, i would say and maybe wizard to a certain extent but like you know Brute and Warrior feel like they, you know, as as someone who plays with both of those classes, I'm like, yeah, I want to play, I want to draft those classes, and I want to see some new cards and some new heroes. Um, I I hope that's a big win. I hope the onboarding products, yeah, happen and and uh, are are something that you know you could see merchandised well at LGSs, right? Like it's not just in the back on the wall. A little, a little display would be nice, right? Like to kind of, you know, let people know, hey, here's flesh and blood. Here's just some decks. I forget what they are. They were in Magic, but they were like battle decks or something like that. They were like semi-competitive standard decks. I think that for CC would be really cool. And, and I hope uh, we all get to hang out and be fresh and be buds. And the uh, Fresh and Buds podcast becomes n number one iTunes, Spotify, Google. Um, and you and the biggest YouTube channel. Uh, these are just there's stretch goals, really. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I'm I'm excited for 2024. I think it's yeah. I think LSS has given us no reason to doubt them at this point. You know, I I, I feel like if they're trying, that's all that really counts, and yeah. and that's what they are doing. They are certainly trying. So I'm yeah, excited. Yeah, man. I mean, look at the Queensland calling they're they've got creators going over they're fun like i think overall they've just got their hands too full they're trying yeah. too much yeah. um and you know i just hope that they focus up a little bit um and they play to the the, the hand that they're dealt and not just try and go big because you know they need to market better but they don't need to be they're they're overbooked right now i can it feels like it yeah, yeah. And you know what? That's all organizational stuff that can be yeah. fixed and hopefully they do that. You know, I I heard that oh, some other card game companies have let go of a lot of people late, lately, so yeah. you know, that's a great time to look at some talent and maybe bring them on. So, yeah. That's going to do it for the show though. Thank you Gary for coming on. Always oh, fun yeah, to man. chat with you. Obviously, we're we're buds. Um plug anything you'd like to plug. Um I would like to plug the Fresh and Buds YouTube channel. Um, if you're not listening to this on YouTube, um, you're just listening to it on Spotify, definitely check out the YouTube. Uh, Tommy and I have been doing um, Fresh and uh, but the Budrush Bellow again, taking a few weeks off here and there. But it's a great time. Um, you get to see Tommy's ugly mug and all the guests as they as they scramble to <laughs> <laughs> as they scramble to figure out what to say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um uh the and the butter spell is a, is a great time you know tommy and i sit there for an hour and just you know talk about the news rat on each other you know just you know buds being buds um if you're gonna be at the hartford calling say hi 
Um, I'll be there uh, if you want to chat with me about any Runeblade stuff or any of the arcane language. I'm happy to chat with you. Um, it's at Mr. Viz on X or in the or in the Buzz Discord. I, my name changes all over all the time. But just, <laughs> just look for the look for the guy holding the Visceri pillow, and you'll be all you'll be all set. Absolutely, absolutely. I can not have said all that better myself. Check out the YouTube. Check out the Buzz Discord. Uh, Twitter, X, all that fun stuff. Also, check out, I have another podcast with my cousin Matt where we talk about indie video games. It's a lot of fun. It's called Fresh really Juice. Good. The link is in the show notes as well. And, well, you know what time it is. It's food time, Gary. Food time. What food do you want to talk about? Well, you know, I, it's the holidays, right? We had we had Christmas dinner. Paige's family does Christmas Eve, but I particularly want to shout out one thing I had this 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 holiday that was just fantastic. Um, and Paige made these cookies that were so good. All right, so picture this: you got two sugar cookies, very good soft sugar cookies. You know, your 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 almost whoopie pie style sugar cookie. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, you got two of those. Then you got fig and raspberry jam that her parents made. Okay. Put it in the middle. Put it in the middle. You got two cookies mm-hmm. and some solid jam. All right. Take that. Take that. Dip it in some chocolate on the top half. Throw some sprinkles on it. Oh. Amazing. It That's... was so good. Like, I have two waiting for me downstairs. I'm going to go eat it before one before dinner. Eat my dinner. And then I have one after dinner. Oh. Um, so good. I can't. I like the best. Um, I I said, you know what? You should make these every every day, <laughs> not just every yeah, Christmas. Yeah, no, Christmas. Yeah. I would I want these all the time, um, <laughs> because like they were just so good, um, you know. But yeah, the holiday meals were great uh, because I had COVID. We hadn't been out, so it was nice to actually go out and like have a meal. Mm-hmm. Um, but with at with their parents, um, you know, we do some we do some of the seven fishes, not all of the seven fishes. Lots of shrimp. They do crab. Um, you know, love it. Some bunch of stuff, stuff, squid, and some other stuff. But yeah. So, but yeah. Shout out to those whoop, the page pages cookies this year, man. Whew. Yeah, good. yeah. You know, hey, listen. You, you got to go up. You eat one. You say, listen, this is so delicious. Let's make a habit out of this. Yeah. Keep keep them coming. Yes. Yeah, it's you know? so good. You know, I I only have one ask. These cookies. <laughs> And, uh, but, uh, it sounds pretty good. And you know what else sounds good? Having Charmer on the show, but we can't this week. Uh, maybe next year. Uh, thank you all. Enjoy your new year. I'm excited for Flesh and Blood and Fresh and Buds in 2024.